For this lesson, we are making a flower inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe. Hopefully by now you have either read a book, watched the biography, or seen some information and looked at her beautiful, gorgeous flower paintings that made her so famous. Georgia O'Keeffe inspired flower painting. You don't need paints for this painting. Let's have some fun. Now normally I would be doing this on larger paper for our purposes today and for filming and maybe this is the size you have at home, we're gonna use a little bit smaller. This is great if you don't have watercolor paints. I'm gonna show you how to improvise and make some up. The first thing we wanna do to make a large flower like Georgia O'Keeffe did with very little background is we wanna make a center. Not all flowers have a circle for a center and not all petals look like loops. I don't want to see what I call lollipop flowers. A lollipop flower, boys and girls, is when you draw a circle and we go a stick and we go boop, 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 boop. That is not what her flowers look like. So, we want to draw a Georgia O'Keeffe inspired flower. Her scent, the centers of her flower were some pretty interesting shapes. So I want you to find the middle of your paper, place your finger there, and then move it in any direction by just a few inches. There's the middle. I'm going to move mine here. I'm going to go ahead and draw any sort of wiggly shape I want. Now, boys and girls, I would normally like to show you this in marker so you can see. I don't know if you can see my shape in pencil, but we want I want you to draw lightly in pencil because this is not a project that we want a strong black outline for. Sometimes we do, but for this, we want to keep it soft, just like our flowers. So I've drawn my center. Inside of my center, I'm going to fill it up with some interesting shapes. I'm going to do these little weird acrylic hues with an end on them. Maybe add in some dots. Perfect. We're ready to go to the next part, the petals. Now, if you looked at her artwork, you'll notice the flower is the entire paper. It's the only subject. There's almost no background. So here's how we draw her petals. Start your pencil at that center shape and just kind of draw a very soft organic line that goes from the center to the edge of the paper. Can you all see my line, boys and girls, with my pencil? So, I'm pressing a little bit harder. If you're drawing at home, so you can see, if you're drawing at home, you want to keep this light. Remember, her colors are very light and airy and beautiful. Now, next, I do want to make this into a petal. So, I want to shape by just making it branch off into a Y. Now, see this little tiny space here? That's background. That may be the only background I have in my drawing. I'm going to continue to do this until I have no room left till I've gone all the way around my paper. If I want to make another sort of Y and branch it off. There we go. That's another little piece of background. So now I have two small pieces of background. After our next step, boys and girls, I think you'll be able to see our drawing a lot better.
So for the next part, for the color part, even if you do have watercolors, start with this step. First, decide what, what is the main color you want your flower to be, because we wanna stick with those colors so that we don't get a brown flower. We wanna to try to keep our colors clear and vibrant and bright. We wanna stick within similar colors. I'm gonna make my flower, hmm, purple. Now, for this, you're gonna need a regular watercolor marker. That sounds fancy. It's not, boys and girls. All it means is, please don't use a permanent marker or Sharpie, then this won't work. So Mr. Sketch is fine. If you have Crayola at home, these things, they're fine. As long as they're a regular marker that you would color with, it should be okay. I am now gonna take my marker and I'm going to outline all the parts I just sketched. Now, if you really wanna save some time and you feel really confident, you can skip the pencil part and go right to this. But I've been making art for years and I would still use a pencil. Notice I did a double line there. I just want to thicken up both sides so I have enough color on my flower for our very next step. Now there is one little thing that I did forget and that is to add some details. So first, let me outline this. I did put details in our center, but if this is all you wanna do and keep it simple, you can. If you would like, you can make the flower look like it's kind of curling over by adding a second wavier sort of line, like I did just there. Another thing you can do, boys and girls, is to add some sort of directional lines. When I say directional, I mean the way the petal would grow from the center outward. This will also help for our next step, especially if you're not working with watercolor paints. Okay. Before we start our next step, we want to take care of those details in the center. So I'm going to use this bright yellow. Now, this is the one place that kind of color doesn't matter. Remember I said we want to use similar colors? For this, just this little part in the middle, doesn't matter. I'm going to go in and I'm going to color all those dots yellow. All those squiggly lines, I think I'm going to add, mm, I like this lime green a lot. Whoa, all off the table crayon, stay with me. Huh, looks kind of similar. I still like it though. Now my details are done and protected. What I've drawn is there so that when we do go to the next step and add some water, even if you don't have watercolors, I still have my details. So here's our next step. If you don't have watercolors, you can now use your markers as watercolors. All you need is some water and a brush. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to soften up my marker. If you can see, I'm just spreading water in the same direction a petal would grow from the center out. Maybe I'll pull some of that color in. Try to work on something clean, on under, with something under you. Please don't ruin your parents' furniture. So if you've put enough 
marker down, your flower should be turning a beautiful pastel color. Can you all see the difference there? Now, if you get the idea of this, don't add it where it's wet. You can get a little fancy schmancy with this. Remember I said to use similar colors? Well, blue is very similar to purple. We know they're next to each other on the color wheel. So in some parts, for my next areas, I'm going to add some blue right next to those lines. This works especially well if you, still, if you do not have any watercolors at all. And all I want to do is just add the color. I can go right next to my original colors or I can leave some space. It's up to you. You're the artist. You make that choice. Now I'm going to continue to go through and I don't need to be careful about this at all. Oh, look how that blue spreads. It's spreading much better than my purple. Some colors will just spread better than others. It happens that way. Could be the brand, could be the color. It doesn't really matter. You're just not going to know until you experiment and play. Because that's what art really is. So notice I'm going very quickly. And very quickly, it's looking like I painted this. But you saw I never did. And I promise, no camera tricks. I didn't get the paints out at all yet. Now, what if I accidentally go into my center? Oops, I got blue in my center. My yellow is just fine because those crayons resisted it. Now, I keep holding my paper up for you to see, boys and girls. However, you're not gonna do that because I know you don't want paint everywhere. We don't want our artwork to just slip off the paper like cheese off a pizza. So as I finish, I'm going to leave these two background areas. I could have colored them in with crayon if I want, but I have something a little bit different planned for them. Also, the edges that don't have background, you do want to go to the edge. Now, what if I do have some watercolors and I want to go even a little fancier? So you can stop right here. I already have a beautiful Georgia O'Keeffe painting. Like I said, if you have larger paper, go for that. She made her flowers super big. In fact, they were almost as tall as I am. They were huge. So the bigger you can make these, the better. If you only have regular size paper though, they still come out beautiful. Now, if you do have watercolors at home, my paper's already wet. So I can open my watercolors right up. I've been using some of these, so some of these are, colors are awake and some of them are not woken up yet. If your watercolors are dry, you're gonna need to take your wet brush straight from the water, wipe it off on the lips. You can tap it in and you can start to spread. Just, did you see that small little tap? you can start to spread the color right throughout. Now, I'm gonna go back and add some more purple, so I'm gonna change my color. I put my paintbrush back in, give it the wiggle, and I'm gonna tap right in this purple here, and I'm gonna spread some more of that purple through my flower. Now, I had those two colors and markers, so I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off one more time. I'm gonna wake up this magenta color right here because I didn't have a marker that was this color. Now notice, again, I'm not digging, I'm not scraping, I'm not scooping. I'm just tapping and I'm filling up my ballerina shoes. If your flower looks very puddly and watery, that's good, that's okay. If it starts to look too puddly and watery, and you don't like the way it looks, that's okay too. I'm going to show you a quick fix for that. So if you have enough, 
And if you happen to use, you can simply take a paper towel and let's see, there's a big puddle of water there. You can just dab, dab, dab and dry that right up. Maybe I don't like that puddle there. I can dab that up. But we don't want these to look solid and perfect. We definitely want some of the areas to be lighter, some to be darker. So we want the watercolors, we want the water and markers, if that's what you're working with, to do their thing. I need to let this dry now. And I hope you had fun making your Georgia O'Keeffe flowers and learning all about Georgia O'Keeffe. Have fun creating, and until next time, bye.